Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 5, Episode 11, Thoughts. This episode was called All the Comforts of Home. Another episode I love, spoilers for everything MCU leading up to and including this episode, but not for the MCU that came out after this episode first premiered. This episode is rated TV-14, so will this video be. Let's dive right in. So, yeah, uh, I think this might actually be the first thing I see Dove Cameron in, so I know some people apparently really hate her. Which I think might just be the fact that, you know, she's a Disney child actor, or at least a Disney, you know, TV star or something like that. You know, it is fairly logical since, you know, for her to appear on this show since, you know, by this point, Disney owned Marvel and ABC. So, yeah, uh, I thought she did fine. Um,. Yeah, I don't really have anything else to say. Um, yeah, and her and her mom, General Hale, very tense. Let's see. And at the end of the episode, we, we realize she's literally Ruby. Dove Cameron's character is literally being kept in a, in a cell, which is... An effective metaphor for how teenagers feel like th their parents are treating them. So, yeah, nicely done. I know that the agents have been through a lot. Not gonna lie, if I... If I was greeted by an automatic recording of Patrick Warburton, I think I'd have a stronger reaction. I love it, you know, so, yeah, it's like 1970-something, and, you know, he mentions electronic mail, which, yeah, you know, back then, that would have seemed like, wow, mind-blowing. You know, this was the, the, yeah, let's see, and, and, yeah, that was, you know, the internet was a military thing before it became something we're all using and let's see yeah I, I love how into it he is you know, he's like look I'm over here now I love Patrick Warburton um yes and yeah we meet Noah always thrilled to see Joel David Moore in in something just yeah um the the let's see and yeah and the the light seemingly from the sky appears so they're doing the thing that i love what time travel stories do of it's happening just like we were you know this is what we were told was going to yeah and let's see and we have the right, right. The um, what was it? Daisy said. Um, let's see. Yeah. Um, you know, I'll be more useful in here. I'll run back end on the mission. Oh no, it's dope ass equipment. Dope ass is a, it's a good thing. And let's see. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> Mac always always with the B movie references, he says that the underground thing is like chud, which Robert Downey Jr. specifically mentioned chud in an interview for the for the first Iron Man movie. Now nah, this is probably not a reference to that. That was you know ten years before this. Yeah. There's there's clear references to make. Moving on, the let's see. Um, right, I I like when the when they all appreciate having fresh air to breathe again. And and yeah, the thing you know, there's a catch. <clears throat> You are using my keyboard, which is fine, 
even though you did not ask. Let's see. And did I already mention? I, I think I might have mentioned in an earlier video. I I feel like the uh, what's what's the word? Uh, Chromicoms. I feel like there's maybe some like spectrum coding going on, and and yeah, that's a very very spectrum thing that you know he really wanted her to to ask before touching his stuff. I love when so they're in the car. And they're like, you know, going over all the ridiculous things that have happened, which I think is is necessary considering how many ridiculous things have happened. And then, you know, when we get to May and she has to mention this awful thing that she went through, she says, dancing. And she says it with such disdain, like she's talking about crawling through a sewer or something. And let's see. Yeah, the the very I I you know, a cab. So big fan of showing a a police car as this threatening thing, and you know the the window is kind of dark before it rolls down. But tinto, win, tinted windows don't mean nothing. We know who's inside, and yeah, the 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 cop who I guess I don't know if it. Let's see, Off Officer Kennedy, it looks like, is... Yeah, you know... I'm not sure if at this point he knows that it's them, because certainly later he knows that he's dealing with Daisy. But, but yeah, you know, he's... Yeah, you know, Mac is like, so, what's what's going on? You tell me. Oh, perfect. yeah. Um, it was, you know, I was I was sparring. It was it was a perfectly legal form of violence, officer. No, I'm I mean the car. That's what was it, John something's car. Um, you know, it's like you know, oh crap, he knows that dude is stolen, and then he's like, how much did he? He's been trying to sell that thing for months. How much did he fleece you for? You know, very nice loot because it did have an F for sale sign. You know. And, you know, Mac goes all, you know, car nerd on him and just, yeah, very, very nicely done. I, yeah. And Deke appears in the present. I am really glad we're going to get more of his character. Really loving Jeff Ward's performance. And, yeah, you know, at the end of the day, like, he was close to the machine when it went off. You know, this, there's much more ridiculous explanations for time travel. And, and yeah, you know, he goes up and, and hugs a tree looking like Trump when he sees an American flag. And, and you know, yeah, there's this lady with her, her dog and she's like, mm, that's, a, that's a pretty tree. You'll, you'll, you know, I said, you'll, be, you'll get over it once whatever you're on wears off. It's nice of her to not call the cops on him. There's a lot of people who would in that situation. And, yeah, he realizes he did fairly accurately recreate the bar and the framework. And then we get a montage that's basically Zima product placement. Like, I don't even know. I'm guessing, let's see, is Zima a real... Yeah, Zima is a real beer so yeah hope they made a lot of money from that because that was very egregious product placement you know then first he gets a, a regular beer and he's like do you have something that looks like this but doesn't taste like actual vomit and you know he gets Zima and it's like wow this is amazing everyone watching should go buy one of these right now and you know he's he's like eating you know, American fast food, which, yeah, if, you know, obviously, if you've been subsisting on this terrible, you know, Cree slave food for for your entire life, yeah, an American cheeseburger's going to seem slightly less offensive to the census. And, yeah, 
then he has to to pay and you know this is when he fights every single patron whilst you know the the female reporters outside making phone calls and i do like that like the bartender doesn't even have to do anything he knocks himself out deke you know tries to make a run for it and you know and also just the the line you know the, you know he, he clear the tap oh right right and he just shows the the you know ah the, the metric, you know, because that's how they would pay, you know, and, and the, you know, you have the thing of, yeah, you know, uh, we take cash or credit, whatever's more, you know, convenient for you, right, because that's how people pay for things in this time. I'm from the future. Just and I, I appreciate like the bartender is completely calm through the entire, you know he's not like oh, don't you can't you know you have to pay you don't know just just very very calmly and and accepting all this ridiculous stuff and let's see yeah very clever twist that you know turns out the light is not coming from space to Earth it's coming it's from Earth into space you know that and and yeah you know Fitz points out you know it's this thing of it can make I forget the exact analogy he used but but yeah what he said was absolutely true and yeah it's the it's the beacon that Hive used and yeah great moment between or great scene between Elena and Mac talking about you know <clears throat> the things that they learned from Imprilanist and you know yeah very very and and I appreciate you know Mac trying to to make her feel better and you know don't mind so it's gonna be pretty weird not to have to break rocks for no good reason and let's see <laughs> and Noah's like you met Enoch. You know he's reckless. Wow. That's, yeah. By their standards, Enoch was absolutely reckless. And, yeah. Um, you know, Daisy has a plan. And she's like, you know, I'm, I'm going to need your, your clothes or something like that. Your, 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 your clothes, your boots, your motorcycle. And he, they look significantly less, you know, gleeful than a lot of us would if Chloe Bennett, you know, told us, take your clothes off. And, yeah, Piper turns out to be down in the, and, and I, I, they did a really great job with that because I did not see the betrayal coming, but yeah, you know this. She's been there for a while, completely isolated from them. She's been hearing things and you know ab about them, and she legitimately thought this would be the best way to to yeah. And <laughs> Daisy rescues Deke but not without you know enjoying herself humiliating him like this and yeah the <laughs> dude I know so much paperwork not what she had in mind but yeah you know and and it's yeah he he comes from this society with way less like civil rights so so yeah there would not be a lot of paperwork in the yeah and let's see um, I think that is about yeah, and and you know she she's like how how did you immediately get arrested? And he said, oh, have you tried Zima? Wow. Let's see. 
and yeah, the, the, I I really appreciate that when it's revealed that Piper is betraying them or has betrayed them. It's just another stage of that. You know, you have the thing of the the you know she says I'm not really a a, a science person. You know that's that's why she couldn't turn off the the beacon and then you know yeah fits removes the the time in yeah I forget what he called it but it has to deal with timing and he said you know it's been installed rather sloppily I might add and you know Piper raises her gun and says like I said I'm not much for the science and yeah very cool fight and yeah you know, um, Elena manages to to take their guns before they're able to to shoot, and and yeah, you know, as her mother later points out, Ruby was being kind of careless here. You know, obviously, if you're going up against a speedster, you can't just be, you know, pointing guns like that. You know, like if you know, not to Monday Monday morning quarterback here, but you know, maybe throw in some sort of flashbang or something to, to, you know, to prevent her from, from doing that, and then just go in guns blazing. You know, you don't need to, to pose like that before saying, you know, to take them out. But yeah, very, very cool fight, and we realized that at least some of them are robots and Ruby throws the Xena circle thing and Elena loses her arms just like you know her future counterpart Imperlanist and let's see yeah um so when when Ruby and Hale were talking about she skipped class, they're not talking about, oh, you know, she pretended she was going to go to school, but she, like, ditched and hung out with friends or something. No. You know, they're... She's in this cell, and she, I guess, refused to go with when she was told. I guess it is possible that at the start of the episode that was out in like out that wasn't in a cell but I don't think so I think that because it looks like it's the exact same room not just like oh they recreated it based on yeah I'm I'm fairly confident that she was in a cell at the start of the episode as well and let's see yeah um, Noah did not last very long, which I will, I, I was surprised. I thought, oh, this is going to be the new, but yeah, run and explosion and post credit scene. It is Philadelphia. You can really, if you're anywhere in Philadelphia, there's almost definitely you you can't go very far you you know look in in several different directions and at some point you will spot someone in a hoodie running down the street Let's see but yeah it turns out to be creel it's slightly amusing to me that so the Car carl creel is played by Brian Patrick Wade and i'm going to go ahead and guess that it was, it, it looks like, um, crap, the uh, Big Bang Theory, because that's definitely Kaylee Cuoco next to him. But yeah, those, you know, Big Beefcake like him, those are the, the roles he gets. He's, yeah. You know, this, the roles like here on Ages of S.H.I.E.L.D., where he's like, the, you know, muscle, big, intimidating guy, and then, you know, roles where he's, you know, ah, oh, look at this hot guy. 
Anyway, um, yeah, and Hale says we're putting together a team, which is very ominous. Love it. And yeah, so IMDb Trivia, General Rick Stoner in the comics was the first director of S.H.I.E.L.D., so very nicely done. Hmm. The way the Chronicon describes their role and the rare situations in which they interfere, similar to something on... I don't know if that's a spoiler, so I'm just going to say there's a, a, another show that has... Yeah. And let's see. Um, so, yeah, I disagree with calling this a, an actual plot hole, but it is, I do think it's accurate that, you know, someone answered in the IMDb goof section, a light that is bright enough to shine across galaxies in order to call the creature to Earth should blind anyone looking at it from just a few feet away. And let's see. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. When Deke appears from the future, he says, oh boy, like in Quantum Leap. And, huh. Wow. It's been too long since I watched Galaxy Quest. I missed a Galaxy Quest reference. When Fitz arrives in the presence, he says, that was a hell of a thing. And let's see. There's a Doctor Who reference. Yeah. Um, Noah references an Asgardian spot in the city. Yeah, that's got to be a, a reference to Ragnarok. I was, I was thinking that as I was watching it, and I was thinking, does that match up with the time? Because... That movie came out in 2017. Uh, let's see if I can get a more accurate. What? I have the year, but what what day? November 3rd, 2017. This episode was March 2nd of 2018. So it's slightly. But then I guess I'm not sure they said that it was like right, um, you know, just now. And let's see. I, th <laughs> I like. You'd be surprised how often Shield is mentioned. We have a small but active fan base. And let's see. Yeah, a bunch of the best quotes from the episode are in. The memorable MBB quote section and let's see. this is what Voss warned me about. If he's right, then this is where it all starts. Hell on earth. And we're back. And let's see. Um Yeah, I like. <laughs> yeah, um, Simmons says the secret tunnels reminds her of an Agatha Christie novel, and then Max says it's like Chud. Yeah, they they have different tastes in media. The two of them. Let's see, I'm not shaming. I I don't. I haven't watched Chud, but you know. I, I enjoy Agatha Christie adaptations, but I also quite enjoy, like, 80s B-movie schlock. And let's see. I'm saying that it's impossible to imagine anything that you can't imagine. Like, I couldn't imagine food that was shaped like animals. Like, that was a... that totally caught me by surprise. And the, the, you know, the small town sheriff's department are like, why did we get a cell right within earshot of our office? Why was that necessary? And let's see. I appreciate the, the detail that, you know, Piper had eyes on their families. And May says, oh, great, one more thing for my mother to be paranoid about. Yeah, that is definitely. Let's see. I'm setting up an alert. Even though my friends have been out in the world for like four minutes, it'll let me know if one of them is spotted. 
It has been much longer than four minutes. Dramatic effect, Noah. These things look roomier from the outside. That'll get us where we need to go. Hey, it could be worse. True, we could be enslaved by an alien sociopath in a dystopian future. Or we could be trapped inside a virtual reality fascist state. Or stuck at the bottom of the ocean. Or stopping a crazy robot lady. Or falling out of a plane. Fighting Daisy's mom. Fighting Daisy's dad. Or dancing. <laughs>